Hi, on uh, RT4, it says two wave pulses uh, interacting, so we're gonna try to find the impact. A student states, if two wave pulses travel in opposite directions along the same string meet, they reflect from one another and go back the way they came from. Well, according to the principle of uh, superposition, meaning like when they interact, okay, each one will continue in its path as if the other one didn't exist. And you should have seen this when you did the, uh, the lab, okay? So the statement is wrong because each wave will continue uh, traveling along the string in the same direction as it was going. There's no bouncing, okay? In here, uh, we're trying to rank for RT5 the, the maximum amplitude of the string at the instant that the positions of the centers of the two pulses coincide. So when these two meet, okay, you should, ha you should end up with six boxes because they're going to build up on each other, right? In here, when these two meet, you should end up with four boxes. It's going to be the height of four, basically, right? So when this goes into here, okay. This one here, you have two down here, and you have four here, so you're going to end up with a positive two. So it's going to look uh, something like this. Uh, yeah, this is going to be gone, but the amplitude here is just going to be that. This one, they're going to kill each other, so it's zero. So when you rank them, it's going to be A, B, C, D, basically, in that order. Okay. RT6. Wave sources separated by one, one wavelength. We're going to look for the intensity, right? Uh, so basically, these two point sources, I'm going to call them S1 and S2, are separated by a distance equal to one wave, okay? So, and they have the generating waves of the same frequency and the same amplitude. Rank the maximum amplitude of the wave at the labeled points. Now, if the difference in path, so for, okay, if the difference in path between from one source to an A point and from another source to the same point is a multiple of a wavelength, right, or zero, if there is no difference, then you have constructive interference, which means you have, which means you have maximum amplitude. If that difference in distance is half a wavelength, then you're going to have destructive interference. So let's see what we have here. So if I go from S1 to A, I get half a wavelength. If I go from S2 to A, it looks like I get one and a half wavelength, right? So the difference there is a full wavelength, okay? Okay. So, so for A, you're going to get constructive. Let's say for B, you have uh, a quarter of a wave, right? And from S2, you have three quarters. So the difference there is half a wave. So this is constructive, this is destructive. So let's look at C. Between S1 and C, you have one, two, two and a half wave. From S2 to there, to, to C, you have one and a half wave. So I think the, this is constructive also, because the difference in path here is one wavelength, or multiple of a wavelength. Now, from S1 to, to D, and from S2 to D, there is no difference in distance. So, which means the waves are gonna get there at the same time. So that's constructive interference. So it should be a, D, and C together, and B will give you destructive interference. So remember that if the difference in path is a, a, form, a multiple of a wavelength, constructive interference, if it's a uh, multiple of a half a wavelength, it's destructive interference. And I explained that in the previous video. Okay. Two identical point sources are genera wa generating waves with the same frequency and amplitude. The two sources are in phase with each other, meaning like 
when they, they both have, they have the crests at the same time and the troughs at the same time. So the two sources generate wave crests at the same instant. So that they explain that. The distance between the two sources is equal to one and a half times the wavelength or 1.5 uh, lambda. So basically each box is half a wavelength, okay? All right, so list all the, la all the labeled points where the waves from the two sources constructively, constructively interfere. All right, so let's see what we can do here. So let's go, I'm gonna call this S1 and S2. So let's start with A. Distance here is one wave, right? Okay, from S2 to A, it looks like um, it's one and a half wave. So for A, it should be destructive interference, right? from S1 to A. Yeah, that's constructive interference. Let's look at B. For B, this is half a wavelength, right? And from S2 to B, it looks like it's two uh, wavelengths, right? So the difference is a, is a multiple half a wavelength, so that's destructive also. You do the same thing for D, so this is half a wavelength, and this here is a full wavelength, so the difference is a multiple of half. The difference is half a wavelength here. To do E, I think it's gonna be the same as D because of that symmetry there. Okay, so let's look at C. Um, so this is one wavelength, two wavelengths here. Okay, and this is one and a half wavelengths. So I'm gonna write this as, well actually, okay, so this is 1.5 wavelength. So I think we have to figure out this distance and this distance. We know this distance is two uh, lambdas. So let's see, so that's gonna be 2 squared plus 1.5 squared. Take the square root of that. So this is 2.5 lambda, right? So the difference between here and here okay, is half a wavelength. So that's destructive interference. F should be the same way because of a uh, symmetry. So none of, the, uh, none of these uh, points will have constructive interference. And I think for destructive interference is all of them, same logic. Okay. <coughs> all right, let's look at uh, RT8. Wave sources separate by one wavelength. Two identical point sources are generating waves with the same frequency and amplitude. The two sources are in phase, which means they have to generate crests at the same time. The uh, wavelength is of the waves is equal to the distance between the two sources. So basically, two boxes is equivalent to a wavelength here. That's what they're showing you here. Okay, list all the label points where the waves from the two sources constructively, constructively interfere. If there are no such points, indicate that by stating none. Okay, so let's look at point A. From A to the source here is one wavelength. From A to this other source, I'll call this one and two, it looks like it's two wavelengths, right? So it's a difference of one wavelength. So A, constructive interference. B, uh, you got half a wavelength here. And from B to, to the second source, it looks like you have one <coughs> and a half wavelength. Okay, so This is one and a half, yeah. So this is gonna be constructive also at B, okay? At C, let's see. This looks like it's a quarter of a wave. And from this source to here, it looks like it's three quarters of a wave. So if we uh, subtract here, I think we should get destructive interference at point C. Because 
that's going to be half a wavelength, right? So it's going to be a multiple of half a wavelength. If we do D uh, from, from this source 1 to D, it looks like it's 1 and 3 quarters. Okay, 1 and 3 quarters of a wave. And from D to 2, it looks like it's uh, 3 quarters of a wave. So the difference is a multiple of a whole wavelength. So D is also true. You can do the same thing and you would, uh, well, there's a symmetry. E is kind of like identical to A, so I don't have to do E. It's the same logic as A, okay? All right, so let's look at this harmonics business here. We're going to go right to the problem because the theory was done in a, a previous video. Now, a couple things we have to know. Fn equals nV. This is the V of the uh, the sound in the medium, okay? Or of the or the s the wave basically. Nv over either two L. If it's if the uh, organ or the uh, the instrument is open at both ends or closed at both ends, and n takes any values, it doesn't skip. Fn equals Nv over 4L, that if it's open at one end and closed at the other, okay? Uh, like a, a bottle of soda, basically. It's open at one end, closed at the other, you can make different sounds. Or when you fill it up with water, it makes different sounds. And N skips. You can, you, you can only have the odd harmonics. What are the first three harmonics of a note produced on a 31 centimeters, so 0.31? meters, long violin string, so that's closed at both ends. If waves of this string have a peer, uh, speed of 274.7 meters per second. So I think I'm going to find the first one. So that's 1. Speed is 274.4 divided by 2 times 0.31 equals uh, 442.58 hertz. To find the next one, to find F2, you just do 2 times F1. To find F3, you just do 3 times F1. All right, so let's look at number 22. The sixth harmonic of a guitar string is 300, uh, so this is F6, it's 398 hertz. When the wave has a speed of 220.8 meters per second. How long is the guitar string? Okay, so I think we're gonna go to, guitar string is tied at both ends, so we have to use this one, but we're gonna do it for F6. 398 equals, the N is six, the V is given to 20.8 over two times the length. And if you solve this equation, you should get a length of 1.66 Mirrors. Okay. Number 23. The violin string is 50 centimeters, so that's 0.5 mirrors, and has a fundamental frequency of 440 hertz, so that's a, your F1. What's the speed of the waves on this string? So I'm just going to do F1 equals 1 times, uh, we're looking for the speed, V over. 2L, so 2 times half, okay? So your F1 will be 440 hertz. Okay, let's look at 24. These are pretty straightforward. You just have to uh, follow the formula and be careful with the skipping when the object, uh, when, the, uh, when the, the pipe is closed at one end and open at the other. What are the first three harmonics in a 2.45 meter long pipe that is open at both ends, okay? If the speed of sound in the pipe is 345. So I think I'm gonna find the first one. That's gonna be one times the speed, which is 345, okay? Divided by two times 2.45. And here we should get 
uh, 70.41 hertz. Now the next one will be just twice as much as F1. The third one will be three times F1. All right, number 25, the same information from before, but it's open at what end and what at one end and it's closed at the other, right? What are the first three harmonics? Now, this is gonna be, this is when we're gonna have the skipping. So we're gonna go F1, F3, and F5. Okay, so F1 is equal to one times 345 over four times 2.45. And you can probably see clearly that it's just gonna be half of 70.41. So this is gonna be uh, 35.21 hertz. Now the next harmonic will be three times as much, and the next harmonic will be five times as much. Okay? All right, 26. What is the fundamental frequency of a 0 0.2 meter long organ pipe that is closed at one end when the speed of sound is 352 meters per second? So it's closed at one end and open at the other, obviously, right? So F one is equal to one times 352. Since it's open at one end and closed at the other end, we have to put the four here. If you, if you don't understand this, you have to go back to the previous video. So it's four times 0.2, okay? And you should get your fundam fundamental frequency to be 440 hertz. All right, 27. If flute acts as an open Pipe, so which means open at both ends. Sa Sam sounds a note with a 300 hertz pitch. What are the frequencies of the second, third, fourth on, uh, of this pitch? Okay, so F1 is 1V over uh, 2L. Okay, well actually we don't need to do any of that. Okay, if it's open at both ends, the second, third, and fourth will just be multiples of the 370. So the second one will be two times 370, and then the third one is three times 370. The last one is four times 370. Okay. A student connects one end of a string with negligible mass to an oscill oscillator. The other end of the string is passed over, blah, blah. So basically you have, you have this, okay? Okay, he shortened the, the length of the string, right? And we have to figure out with what frequency they have to oscillate this uh, vibrator here, this oscillator, so that we end up with, uh, we end up with one antinode, right? Yeah, so this is your antinode here, right? So let's see. Um, F equals NV over 2L. Now, that's the fundamental, because you only get in half a wave. That's the first one you can get. If I cut this in half, the length in half, right? It means the frequency is doubled. So the frequency should be twice as much as before. Okay, number 30. The speed of a propagation of a transverse wave on a two meter long string fixed at both ends is 200 meters per second. Which one of the following is not a resonant frequency of this string. Resonant frequencies is basically when you see the same pattern, right? Because you can't get that resonance. You can't see that standing wave at every frequency. There are just certain frequencies for which you can see that. So I think here what we're gonna do, we're gonna find the fundamental, okay? Since it's a string, it's attached at both ends. So I think this is just 50 hertz. So now your, your resonant frequency is, okay, uh, will be multiples, okay, 
of 50. Whole multiples of 50. So I think the wrong one is 25. So it's A. Thirty-one In a resonating pipe that is open at both ends, there are displacement nodes. Okay, so it's open at both ends, so it should look like that. Okay? So this is a node. This is an anti-node. Okay, so there are, A is wrong. Okay, so you have anti-nodes at the, at the ends. So the answer is B. Number 32, if a guitar string has a fundamental frequency of 500 hertz, which one of the following frequencies cannot set the string into resonant vibration? So the ones that will set it into resonant vibrations will be multiples or whole multiples of 500. Um, okay, so the only one that I can see here is C because that's three times 500. 33. The lowest tone to resonate in a pipe of length L that is closed at one end but open at the other. So we have to kind of like focus on this equation here. It's 200 hertz. So that's F1 basically. So F1 is 200 hertz. Which one of the following frequencies will not resonate in that pipe? So the ones that will actually work are odd multiples of 200. So I think the answer is B. B will not work because all the other ones are odd multiples of, of uh, 200. Okay, 34. If a string fixed at both ends resonates in its fundamental mode with a frequency of 150 hertz, at which of the following frequencies Will it not resonate? Okay, so well, if the fundamental is 150 and it's fixed at both ends, so any multiple of 150 will make it resonate. So the one that's not good is uh, this guy's out and this guy's out. So the answer is A and D. A standing wave is oscillating at 950 hertz on a string as shown in the figure, right? So that's not the fundamental. That's actually the third harmonic because you see three loops in here, right? First, second, and third harmonic. What is the wave speed? Um, so V equals lambda times frequency, right? So the frequency is 950. And the wavelength is just from this point here to this point here. So if you can't see that it's 40 centimeters, we can do 60 divided by, uh, what is it, one and a half wave. So that should give you 40 centimeters. So if we want to do it in meters per second, it's 140 times 950. So let's see, what is that? Nine, oh, 950 times 140, it's 380 meters per second. In the answer key, I did it differently, but it's the same idea. So at least you have two ways of doing it. Uh, for RT9, uh, I, don't want, I don't feel like reading this whole thing, so I'm just going to look at uh, my notes and see what I did here. Okay. For RT9, I think it says all the strings are identical which means their mu is the same. We're going to use the, uh, the velocity formula with, the, with tension in a string, right? Uh, except their lengths are different, but the mu is the same. So that ratio of mass to length is the same. Okay. They have the same tension, which means they're going to have the same speed. So V is the same. So you can put that under the reasoning. Um, so it's asking us to find the frequency. So V is lambda times frequency. If V is constant, frequency and lambda are inversely proportional. I think we just have to find the lambda here, and we're good to go. 
You know, a couple of ways we can do this. Uh, we can just do it by taking 25 divided by the number of cycles, so which is one, two and a half, okay? And that should be what, 10? Okay, so that's your wavelength, that's 10 meters. You do the same thing for the next one and you should get 27 divided by one and a half. This one is one, two, three and a half, so 28 divided by three and a half, and this one is 28 divided by one, two, okay? And so you just have to figure out, uh, if you want to know the highest frequency, it has to be the shortest wavelength. So I don't know what these numbers are, I didn't do the math. Uh, actually I did. So for B, it should be eight. For C, it should be 18, and for D, it should be 14. So the, uh, the smallest wavelength will give you the highest frequency. So the order is B, A, D, and C. Okay? Yep. Okay. For RT10, uh, so let me see what I underlined here as important. They have the same length, but may not have the same mass. So which means their mu is not the same. Okay. And the tension is different here. So I think we have to just use the formula V equals lambda times frequency. Now the frequencies are given here. So to find the wavelength, uh, what you can do is like you can see how many, well you can uh, call this length here L. So lambda is gonna be L over the number of cycles. So I see one, two, three, four, five. So for this one, it's gonna be L over five. This one is gonna be L over one, two, three. This one is gonna be L over one, two and a half. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so to find, to find V is gonna be lambda times the frequency, and the lambda is just gonna be L over whatever that number is. So for A, for instance, the V will be uh, L over five, okay, times 500 which is the frequency, so that's 100 L. For B, it's gonna be L over three times 300. So it should be 100 L also. So for C, it should be uh, L over 2.5 times 300. So how much is that? So that's five over two, six. So that looks like it's 120 L. And for D, V is equal, it's the same as, uh, as A basically. So it's 100 L. So it looks like uh, A, B, and D are equal. Oh, did I mess that up? I did. This is not 100, D is not 100. <coughs> Let me see. Okay. Oh, it's uh, this is f okay. This is L over five times four hundred, not uh, five hundred. So that's eighty L. Okay. So it should be C first. A and B are tied for the next place, uh, next uh, position, second place, and uh, then comes uh, then comes what is it? D. All right. I'm gonna look at. <coughs> Gonna look at RT eleven. Okay. Now for RT eleven, all the speeds should be the same because all these waves are traveling in the same medium. So the speed only depends on the medium and the conditions of the medium. Now to find this length distance here is eighty centimeters. That represents a quarter of a wave. Okay? So now, which means the wavelength here, okay, is gonna be 320 centimeters or 
to be two meters if we do this in meters. Speed is going to be in meters per second, and frequency will be in hertz. Okay. Now, to, f to find the frequency, we know that V is equal to lambda times frequency. So t t t frequency is going to be 340 divided by 0.32. And I got 106.25. Okay. Now, I th oh, there's a lot of ways we can do this. I think uh, the next step maybe is just to go after the frequencies. <coughs> now, this is closed at one end and open at the other. So there is that skipping. So the next overtone will be three times 106.25. So which is 317.76. The next one will be 5 times 106.25, which is 531.25. And the next one will be 7 times 106.25, so it's 743.98. Now to find the wavelength, you just do V over frequency. I think in the answer key, in the packet, I did it differently. But that, this is just another way. So. I mean, I didn't do the math here, but the wavelengths will be about 107 here, or 1.07, okay? The next one will be uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, I didn't do this. Uh, let me just do the math quickly here. Okay, so let's try it. So it's, we're going to do 340 divided by 317.76. So it's 1.07, then 340 divided by 531.25. That should be 0 0.64. And the next one is 340 divided by 743.98. That should be about 46 meters, okay? All right, let's look at the next, the next one, RT12. Now, this is open at both ends, so it's going to behave like a string. Okay, let's close that both ends. So now, they're giving us the speed is 340. Now, the speed here will also be 340. This wave is traveling in the same, uh, same medium. Okay. Um, I think from here, we can get the frequency. So we do 340 divided by 0.4. And I got 850. Yep. Okay. Now, this is the second, of, uh, this is the second overtone, right? Or the third harmonic. So the first one will be a third of that. So I think we can do... A third of 850, which is 283.33. Again, in the answer key, I did it completely different, uh, differently, but you can probably just try it this way. The second harmonic is 2 times 283.33, because there is no skip in here. So it's 566 and 2 thirds. And the last one is 4 times 283.33, so it's 1133.32. Now, how do you find the wavelength? Well, all you have to do is uh, do the speed divided by the frequency. So this should, this should be 1.2. Okay. This is going to be 0.6. And this is going to be 0.3 meters. Look at this one here. Okay, we are at 36. Okay, so let's look at 36. Two strings different only in length, okay, which means they have the same mu basically, okay, are attached to the same oscillator as shown in the figure above. Both are fixed at the other end and are under the same tension. So if they are under the same tension, this means V is the same because V is equal to 
square root of tension over the linear, sorry, the linear density. Okay. So now we, we can say that V equals lambda times frequency, right? So now if V is the same, we just proved that because the tension is the same and the, they are identical. The frequency is also the same. The frequency is generated by this oscillator, okay? Which means the lambda has to be the same, okay? Okay, well, that, that can only be true for one of the strings. So it's not gonna be true for the, for the other string, okay? Because it has a different length. So the answer here is D, okay? All right, and uh, that's it.